Psyche Truth. Life. Wisdom. Okay, this is Athena Jezik, and this is part seven. We're going to do a little special work on the feet. So I'm going to oil both of them up. And I know that um, I've got other videos out there of the feet, but let's just go over it again. I may come upon some different things that I haven't mentioned. And feet are, with many, many people, the favorite. A very good thing to rub. You know, they really get us around places, and they're oftentimes quite neglected. So I'm just taking my fingers now and not only applying the oil but also getting into the the feet. We did them we did the feet already twice when we were doing the legs. But now I'm going to take it into a little bit different range of motion and show some of that stuff we can do. Now, if people have ticklish feet, the thing to do with it is start where that's not ticklish, just start on top and work it really slowly. And slowly just get your hand on. Don't don't go in with your fingertips right away because that's that's where it's even more tickly. Um, I always just get my palms started and then just slowly wait for a relaxation and then eventually you can move your palm down to that ticklish area of the feet and get into the foot. I have not had any problems ever doing that. And I have seen some very ticklish feet, but I've been able to penetrate through that reflex and get the footwork done. So, again, it's all about if you surprise the body, it'll have a reaction. If you go in and let it invite you in, it's going to give you a different response. Okay, so... All right. We're going to just take time to go between each of the toes. And here you're going to go deep enough to where you're feeling yourself between the tendons and somewhat of the bone. You can go on both the front and the back with this. And then move to the next toe. And the next one. Okay. You can get to the side of the foot. Now here's where I'm going in really precisely. I'm paying attention to every little detail. Whereas when I was including it into the legwork, I was still being paying attention to what needed to be done, but this is taking it to another level. And so here I'm right in front of the cuboid bone. Some of you may have remembered the cuboid bone's significance. It's a little bone in the, in the foot right about here. It's shaped like a cube. That bone has a real critical role in alignment with the rest of the foot bone, the rest of the the bones of the um, feet, the tarsal bones, and metatarsals. This bone I find out of position with the knee quite often, and when that happens the heel strike isn't going to be aligned well, and I've actually found there to be a relationship between a misaligned cuboid bone and low back problems. It's a small alignment, but it's a significant one to correct. So my fingers are on the cuboid bone, and I'm working in different positions with different bones on my left hand, my upper hand. And taking that in, you can also work with the cuboid. You can feel the, through the fascial structure, you can feel if there's been a twisting from the knee down to the cuboid. Okay. 
And there may be some of you that feels that this is doubtful and all that, but you know, I just have to say that I like Einstein's quote that when we are ridiculing something and we haven't done any kind of investigation to it, we are really putting ourselves into a position of being quite ignorant because we're unwilling to realize that maybe somebody else's experience or research or knowledge has brought us to a different point. Having a good balanced left and right hemisphere, it should be no problem to take in information that we're not accustomed to hearing. But when we're out of balance with our brain hemispheres, we oftentimes will react to things that are outside of the narrative or the program that we're accustomed to. So the reaction tends to be one of ridicule. So observe yourself in that because you'll learn a lot more if you can recognize that pattern if that happens to be evident in yourself. I think everybody experiences that we learn how to how to balance ourselves as time goes on. So even though it may seem funny that I say I can feel something from here all the way up to the knee, there is a connection and you can feel it. But your hands have to be trained for it. So now I'm going to push very carefully as I'm giving this this uh, fascial stretch to the heel, I'm going to be bringing the foot back, but I'm also being very careful that the toe is aligning over the knee as this stretch is occurring. And then very carefully taking the ankle into the ankle rotation, letting the knee be stable, not wiggling the knee along with it. Okay, stretching in that, and you can still do the fingers in the toes if they're going to widen like this. Now, if your toes are on top of each other, or they're stuck together and very stiff, you may want to look into some of these toe separators. The, they're used for pedicures. They're very small. Those are small ones. They would be a good one to start with. But there are some more online that are much more aggressive. They really widen those toes. But they can help with a lot of this real stiffness in the in the toes. You want to also be sure that each joint of the toe is moving well. Because the stiff feet are going to make stiff walking and it's going to change the back pattern and everything else. So do take good care of your feet and especially Try to walk outside, try to walk on uneven surfaces, toughen up the bottom of your feet. Alrighty, there's one foot, and now we'll go to the next foot. I do not do foot reflexology as it as a uh, pure practice i'm aware of the points and i am mindful of that when i work the feet but basically all i'm doing is range of motion and massage therapy Let's get to that cuboid bone and see what's going on there along the side. I know this is the different camera angle, but we're going to go to the cuboid. And when you go to the cuboid, you want to make sure that the foot isn't in this more sickled position, but you want to make sure that the foot is pulling in a straight position as you get that cuboid bone in place. And then you can feel what's going on with that.
keeping the outside of the ankle strong is very important uh, to saving yourself from twisting your ankle if that part of the body is, that part of the foot and leg are strong. It will hold that kind of pressure if it's not too great. So do realize the importance in whatever workout you're doing of the delicate parts of the feet and ankle to remain strong as well. So there's been a little bit of movement there, not a lot. Okay, up through the toes again. Okay, now we're going to take that little bit of traction. Let's see how the foot is moving a little to the side, so you want to make sure that it's coming into alignment as you let that fascial stretch happen behind the heel and then taking the foot into a, a I guess this is flexion, plantar flexion or the foot's always different I get so confused in the directions of the body but you want to give that nice stretch lengthening up through the Achilles tendon up into the calf. You want to get a, keep that fairly flexible and stretched. Wearing high heels or any kind of a heel, the higher it is, the tighter your low leg becomes. But if you do have to wear heels, it's important to get this part pulled up so you can stretch the back of that calf and keep that pliable because as, as that shortens it'll shorten it'll change the position of the of the whole foot structure and leg as to how it works it's just another imbalance and then the fingers in between the toes oops missed a toe see this is a real good foot here to be able to have the toes spread like this this is the way we want. Our toes should be like little fingers. We should actually be able to pinch with them and grab things with them. And and the, the toes are also, when they're real strong, you know, they'll hold you in place. They balance. They help to balance. Um, a lot of things that I do, I find my toes just really being kind of the point of stopping me in, in when I'm spinning in, in turns. They're the things that hit the floor and grab onto it so I can stop and balance. And that's why I think things like yoga or uh, dancing where you don't have shoes on, the modern dance or the static dancing, where you're barefoot really does help to keep the feet nice and strong and flexible. Every part of the body matters. And you can always kind of check there the arch of the foot. Sometimes the arch of the foot, I've noticed that sometimes where there's pain in the back, and this does tie in a little bit with foot reflexology, but I don't know foot reflexology that well. But where you, where I feel sometimes a little out of alignment or tension, I oftentimes will find that in a, in this, in a very similar area in the back. And we are so amazingly connected and influenced through meridians and different energy lines and all these different things that we really don't understand yet. Uh, it's We're probably going to start understanding it better as time goes on because 
technological medicine isn't always going to be working with the body as well as the more natural energetics that we can begin to explore and find. But that takes us into a whole other element of healing because it's the whole body and it's having to deal with emotions as well. Um, the technological work is just really to get us back to work and back to being part of the grind and and we tend to ignore just how much discomfort we're in because we want to get back to our riches and our routines and we become a little more disconnected to ourselves and to the very planet that we're living on and we get disconnected to each other and it all does start by getting to know yourself deep within all levels okay there's one other area of the feet that we don't always stretch in as deeply as we as we could and that is where we're taking the foot into a, a point. So much of what is done is, is really more flexion or plantar flexion, whatever the proper term is there, but we don't point the toes deeply very much. That takes a, a tightening up in the calf and sometimes if you point too quickly and you're a little dehydrated, you might get a charley horse up there. But this is a real important thing to do, is to stretch these muscles through here, the front muscles. So I'm going to hold the heel, and again, lining it up with the toe, we're going to... Uh, I'm going to pull this downward with the emphasis on the big toe. And I'm also going to apply a little traction so it's coming outward and downward. And the heel is being lifted upward. And I'm going to hold this position and let it unwind a little bit because there's a lot of tension and it feels as though this needs some unwinding. There's, it feels like there's a little creaking almost going on with some of the joints. Probably because this position really is hard to get and we just don't pay attention to that as often as we do the other direction. So that's a little unwinding, but you want to be sure that the toe is straight in line with the knee. You can just let it come up and then take it back and stretch the back of the leg. Again, the toe over the knee and pulling it down this way again. Now when it is in this position, if it's all aligned well, then you can begin to rotate the toes from about here upward is where you're going to feel it the most. Just a back and forth gliding kind of motion. And then as if you're walking on a rougher surface, you can take a little rotation into it. So we mentioned getting range of motion in all of the joints. Please don't forget about range of motion in your feet as well. Forgetting the range of motion in our feet, what happens is we then begin to kind of walk like we have duck feet. We just kind of slap them on the ground. You can develop your foot to a point to where when you're, you work the floor in a certain way, particularly when you're in movement, you can work the floor in a certain way where you're coming up and down with your foot. It can be so developed that you, if you're jumping off the floor, you can barely hear yourself come back down because the foot is in so much control. You hit the floor with your, the toe and the ball of, ball of the foot, and then you bring it down its toe, ball, heel, but it comes so quickly, toe ball heel, and there's so much control with the rest of the body that you barely can feel yourself or hear yourself landing. And same with the push off. If you're going to push off for a jump, you use heel ball toe in getting, of course, a spring up into the leg as well. You can push off and almost 
hold yourself in the air with a little suspension. You're not really doing that, but it, it appears that way because of the way that your foot is taking you off the ground. It's kind of a little suspended motion there. So as you get yourself in alignment and develop yourself properly, you'd be amazed at what the body can do. And what's really fun is to get in, get into the rhythm and the frequency of the, of really good music, and just carries the body all over the place. And doing that with a strong body makes it even more fun than having to be careful or risking being hurt. But that goes for any sport, really. You will improve your sports in anything you do if your body is lined up well. Then there's a whole part of ideokinetics, which is giving the body an image in order to move it. And that is an incredible thing to begin to work with as well, because by giving the body an image, the only muscles that then are working are the muscles that are needed in order to achieve that certain movement. In other words, if you were to, if I was to say, put your hands to the side, arms to the side, people would put their arms to the side and hold them to the side, which is nothing wrong with that. But if you say, imagine that your arms are resting on the back of a couch, you'll find certain muscles relaxing and other muscles holding, and you'll find it's much more relaxing. So the whole movement patterns can become much more efficient when you have the kinetic, the ideokinetics behind it, because you don't have to work as hard in what you do. And that can be with any sport. It can be with imagining with golfing or with basketball or with track and you get that idea of how the body is going to look through an image, it, it seems to pick up differently the way the brain sends the signal down through the neuromuscular system. So it's quite fascinating. The body is amazing. I'm just giving a little traction here on the toes. We're getting close. And then we're going to just bow these toes in. We're going to sickle the feet and stretch. And then put them out and stretch into turnout. And sickle them. There we go. And check the ankles. And everything looks good. Take a little stretch. One more just into that fascial. Stretching. Get a hold of that fascia. Get that image going of the fascia and begin to stretch. You make a little tiny arc feeling with it as you're stretching. And this is something that is not easy to find. Some of you may be able to pick it up if you've worked a lot with subtleties, but if you haven't worked with subtleties, you're going to, the tendency will be to pull on the heels instead of pulling on the fascia. kneecaps. Then you can look at the alignment and see where it is, see how it is, and I'm looking up at Joy's um, center through the plumb line, and the chin is right on cue with the sternum. She's coming down, her hips are even, the feet are equally turned out, there's not one going like that, so the hips are in well placed, shoulders are well placed. And all in all, looks like she had a good rest. This is Athena Jezik. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more videos. Please visit my website at www.acranio.com and look forward to seeing you all with straight bodies and feeling good.